This podcast is being brought to you by Trinity College Dublin. For further information, please visit our website itunes.tcd.ie. Um, it's a pleasure to be back in, in Dublin during the Enable project. We had some very nice, interesting meetings here. Um, as uh, uh, I was introduced. I, I've been a family carer for some years, and uh, I got the same question very often: What time is? What day is it today? Then seconds, minutes after, what day is it today? And that was uh, a problem, not only for my mother, but also for me and the relation, because when you get the same question over and over again. You get really mad. And so then suddenly, like Eureka, <laughs> I got the idea how the calendar should be that could help her to know what day it is. And, um, and well, I, I knew that this was possible to do. That's my background as in, in science and technology <coughs> that I've been working on for 35 years or so. <laughs> And, um, and um, I, my husband is an electronic engineer, so I knew this could be done at home. <laughs> so um, that's how it started <coughs> for, for us. And then having got this idea, uh, what, what else could we do? That could, what, what, else, what all other problems did we have that could be um, solved or at least uh, being easier? And that was uh, to f something that could, uh, we could use to find her glasses and keys. And then also, mm, what is happening today? Uh, and then the idea of a remote <coughs> day panel came up. Uh, so I'll go again. come back to all this a little bit later. But uh, uh, then um, from my background in medical biochemistry really uh, most of the time then uh, I knew I was very familiar with the European projects and and that uh, technologies like this and for the elderly and and people with disabilities was on the agenda and I met Cecil who had uh, international connections within this field and then the enable project was was born <laughs> well you can say uh, then to the uh, <coughs> no, that's the point. That's the yeah. so. I'm sorry. Um, uh, the idea of the remote day planner that was also uh, developed and enabled, and also a, a, a device to find glasses and keys. By the way, by the Bas Institute <laughs> of Medical Engineering. Um, this is a, a screencast uh, uh, of how the uh, uh, how the remote day planner will look at the person with dementia. This is just uh, yeah, the the day and date and that is in Norwegian. <laughs> uh, uh, the the plans are shown here, and this has been um, programmed from uh, the caregiver or caregivers if there are more than from their PC anywhere in the world mm -hmm. with a with a PC with a, with an internet connection and you could also have prompts and uh, a certain time before um, uh, the, for instance at uh, <coughs> two o'clock maybe you should be ready with your coat on and everything uh, a quarter to four uh, to two and then uh, that was the idea. So this is briefly explained here on the left-hand side. Uh, so this was developed in Enable, and uh, later it was also uh, trialed in Norway. It's a project that Cecil and I carried out together. Uh, but it turned out that the, this was back in 2005, 6, well, earlier. On. The internet connections, people didn't have broadband 
a connection. They had uh, uh, perhaps uh, 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 mobile, the mobile connection, uh, or um, so that uh, it didn't, it wasn't um, stable enough. So if you cannot rely on a system which suddenly shows this page cannot be shown, mm -hmm. I mean then then you're lost. <laughs> or you cannot. Uh, so this was this uh, <laughs> system is still there, but it's not. It's uh, sort of I, I'm not pursuing it. Um, and other, but an other um, uh, uh, program or uh, that was developed by a Finnish. Um, uh, I think she is a social worker working in a, a care home or something. Or as or a center day center for people with dementia, she had developed a picture gramophone, uh, and this was also child in enable. It's a sort of karaoke touch screen, uh, where it is a PC with touch screen, and um, there are icons uh, uh, resembling or intuitive for some songs, song books. Uh, and uh, then you could touch the screen, and uh, the song then you finally choose choose will uh, appear on the screen, and it will be played. And uh, we have seen films, videos from that, uh, from Finland, and also from uh, from Norway, from the trial of this uh, a care home in Norway. And you see, it's very touching, really, how they enjoy it, and they sit and they act. And they sort of you see the the fruit is and, and it's it's a, uh, it's very touching to to watch. Uh, and uh, then the idea came up to uh, sort of combine those two. Um, uh, first of all, uh, in the uh, enable project, we uh, the, the aim was to. Um, investigate whether it was possible to support the independence of people in, with dementia and, and um, effect on their well-being by giving them access to assistive technologies. And, uh, and we also have to, had to, um, in the trial, uh, find out about uh, what about the well-being, the quality of life. And I became familiar then with the uh, work on Mayor Broad on conceptualization of quality of life in dementia from back in 1999. I think that was the only dementia-specific um, uh, quality of life uh, instrument at the time of Enable. And I uh, quoted there a sentence that uh, the ability of healthcare providers to intervene and affect quality of life is quite greater than to affect the course of the disease. Maybe that's not true now with new medicines that we didn't have at that time. But anyway, the um, um, idea came up that a combination of the remote day planner and music uh, would be uh, maybe a good idea to pursue some further. Uh, uh, then, um, uh, the quality of life domains. Uh, in, uh, in the enable, we didn't examine what is import important for the quality of life. We just went to the literature. And uh, uh, so, at least, the quality of life domains that uh, she um, identified through interviews, I think, with 100 people or so with, uh, with, uh, with dementia. And uh, she found that there were two specific, dementia-specific uh, domains. That was the, no, no, that was the wrong one, sorry. The uh, interaction capacity, uh, and uh, that has with communication difficulties and the understanding, things like that to do. Uh, it was also the sense of aesthetics and the appreciation of nature, art, uh, things like that. Um, that was, she found, was specific, dementia specific. Mm. Um, the, uh, here is the examples of subdomains 
uh, in the year that uh, was identified by Broad. Um, looking up here with the discretionary activities to do hobbies, recreational activities and work. Um, hobbies, for instance, would be very also relevant for, uh, for uh, not only music, but also hobbies could be very relevant for uh, um, uh, uh, using a PC with touch screen, for instance. The um, social participation, uh, happiness with family, we've heard from previous speaker, um, to be able to keep in touch, um, very important. Mm. Um, the well feeling of well-being was also one of the main domains with many uh, subdomains. Uh, that sense of humor, for instance, you could uh, use a PC for to to enjoy things. Mm -hmm. um, some and also um, not feeling bored. Passive, passivity, very <laughs> common problem. And appreciation of beauty, nature, music, <laughs> creativity, uh, for, for uh, photographs, personal photographs. We know that is very important and it's used a lot. Could also be used on the, uh, using internet or, or a PC with that. Now we also have those picture frames that <laughs> perhaps maybe very interesting and, and useful for people with dementia. Uh, I've seen this uh, in a paper. I think it has been said by Mary Marshall, but I'm not quite sure that people with dementia should have the same advantages on new technology as other people. Uh, but is it so? Uh, is it so that people with dementia can use a new technology? Well, yes, some of it. I mean, new technology, what we use daily is packed with technologies, even uh, um, to, to boil water boiler, uh, uh, cooker, um, anything, the microwave oven. There are lots of technology. We don't understand this, but we press a button. And and uh, even if it may be difficult to, to find the right button, <laughs> for instance, on the cooker. Uh, so uh, it's a lot of things we can do. That's quite simple. <coughs> um, but it's also lots of things uh, that's not so easy. For instance, to, to surf the internet. Uh, suddenly you, you are pressing a wrong button and then you are how to get back, how to find where, where, where was I. Um, and um, also the television. Um, uh, this citation is uh, from uh, the mother of a, <laughs> of a former colleague. Uh, he uh, he uh, uh, was going to buy a new television set for his mother and, and this was uh, the comment. <laughs> and uh, my own experience with this is that uh, uh, a friend of my mother, she is 98 now, but uh, she, she, and she watches television and the television set was always on and uh, sport and everything, you know, uh, uh, in her, when I visited her. Um, but then suddenly it was black. Uh, and then was uh, the introduction of digital television in Norway and you had to operate to uh, remote controls. And she, I wonder what that meant to her quality of life. Uh, that she couldn't, she couldn't hear the news, she couldn't, you know. And it, uh, so that was really um, um, not to have the same <laughs> advantages of new technologies, rather the disadvantages. Uh, so now the, um, uh, the aim of the project that I'm going to talk about and that uh, I'm collaborating with two other small companies, uh, technology company, so, uh, the small group uh, used to work with Ericsson, 
uh, mobile phone company developing back here, and, and, and also a company on on um, um, <coughs> universal design things like that. And we wanted to develop a product service to support independence and well-being for people with dementia by giving them access to available services available on the internet through an easy user interface. And that was could be adapted to their needs and likes. And uh, just one example, anybody here using the Google Calendar? Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, <coughs> then you get, get a, a whole month and days and you can put in your, your appointments. But it's, uh, it's not very user friendly, at least not on my PC. It's very, uh, it's so very small text, letters are small, uh, the contrast is not so good. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think so at least, yeah, yeah. but I'm older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but the Google Calendar can be shown in, uh, in a uh, simple user interface by just taking advantage of the, uh, that it is there and it can be transformed. So that was uh, that were the aims of, of our project, um, and we uh, then started to uh, uh, do some interviews. What elderly people used of modern uh, technology, uh, <laughs> uh, and then these, these are, we have had three small projects, and the groups that we have interviewed are small groups, but still we have we did some research or interviews. Mm. Uh, the first uh, uh, group was uh, six persons uh, living in a small uh, town south of Oslo and then there was a second group living in Oslo, uh, mostly women. <laughs> they, uh, and um, uh, they were asked about uh, what uh, they used and uh, the problems they had. So, television and radio, not surprising, give pleasure and company, mm. and also th what they, that mean for small talks and, and conversations, discussions. Uh, mobile phone was uh, definitely the mes most popular, but uh, the group, uh, the group in the small town uh, used much more of the possibilities, the functions on the mobile phone than the other group. Then they just used it as a telephone and, and some of them used SMS messages. And uh, uh, very few used photographs. Uh, and in that group also there were few who used the uh, PC. Um, but one of them, she was really the um, very good at uh, PC internet. She, she was a contact person for her whole uh, <laughs> social network. Uh, and we experienced uh, in this discussion that the motivation and capabilities varied a lot. Um, then we uh, uh, also uh, realized that there were different content preferences among them. Uh, local news were very popular, and uh, I wonder whether that is the idea to write them. Yeah. Uh, some light sport and crim, crime, quiz, humor. Uh, but excluding factors were that uh, they found that modern ICT were difficult to use. Um, uh, that um, user instructions, when they came to user instructions, they got upset. Mm -hmm. They were really so mad about the bad uh, and not user-friendly <coughs> instructions. So that would be a very good idea to <laughs> trying to explain how to uh, present user instructions that people really that are use, usable. Um, also, when things go wrong, what happens? What, how can we uh, get on the right track again? 
Uh, furthermore, abbreviations. What, what do they really mean, all those abbreviations? They are for the insiders, they felt. And um, finally, where can we get help? Uh, we also made some interviews uh, with uh, caregivers for people with dementia. Uh, actually, they were all, they had all been caregivers to people with early onset dementia, but uh, most of them were older than 65 uh, at this time. And uh, uh, I think what's uh, uh, also came up here and that uh, yeah, was not surprising, perhaps they liked uh, um, watching television. That was perhaps the most important uh, entertainment and pastime for them. Uh, and some experienced new interests that, uh, that uh, people who had not been interested in sport before, they suddenly caught interest in that. Uh, well, maybe that's not so, uh, so strange because in Norway we have a sports program. <laughs> so those of us who are fed up with football and, uh, you know, then <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> too much. Uh, commercials and de debates were not interesting. They couldn't really follow, I think. What, what's that? Um, they couldn't <laughs> follow what was happening. Uh, and some also felt that uh, it was people all around, so it could be confusing for them. Uh, music programs, music is coming up all the time, and, and photos and pictures use this as communication. Uh, some used mobile phone, and there are some easy to use mobile phones that uh, you don't have so many choices and buttons. And also CD, DVD player, of course. And one person still used a PC and paid his bills. That's, so that shows that it's a very varied, could be a very varied use. This is small, it is not, I think we were about uh, 15 people in a group discussion. That was a setting here. So just to uh, conclude, from, from this, that uh, user requirements are very important, usability, and that the needs change over time, and we would need to think of flexibility, flexible solutions, and that the content had to be personalized. I think, we, I think it's well known that we are more, more alike at birth than we are at the end of life, that we, there's a life in between, and these are, this is different. And um, uh, so, and finally, a tolerance for error. Uh, in order to uh, uh, actually be discussed with the uh, caregiver group, whether they could understand what, what was most intuitive for them, whether it, would it be icons or would it be text? Or, so we tested some icons. And this, this testing of icons was done uh, in a senior center in as well. And uh, what works? Uh, should it be alone or in combination or black and white or in, in colors? And these are just some examples of icons uh, presented. Uh, we first presented just the black and white and those three. And then uh, we pre presented with colors and then with uh, yeah, different combination. And not only icons for having uh, the text read loudly, but also bigger text, <coughs> and, uh, sign icons for information, icons for help, things like that. What, what is intuitive for them? What do you understand? And uh, what came out of this? That is, uh, and the, the experience with, um, the experience with uh, PC uh, varied from almost expert, I would say, to didn't use it at all. And uh, the only icon that everybody knew was this. Hmm. So uh, we uh, decided then that uh, we should use both an icon and a text. And what icons that uh, have not been decided yet. Uh, 
this is a tentative, could be a user interface on the uh, start side for the, of, um, uh, uh, of the service or product that we are trying to develop. Actually, it is at the working prototypes uh, stage now. It doesn't look like this. This is just an example. Um, uh, first of all, to show what is my present today, one could see what's, what's on today. Um, to have a calendar function. And under joy there, uh, we should have many different choices. Pressing joy, one would have photographs, one would have uh, uh, news, um, films, uh, and uh, there is a communication also possibility. And also uh, help, if you um, are in need of help, and then there will be an SMS message to predefined numbers. Uh, this is also how it could look like. It's more closer to the one, the version we have now, uh, with day and date, time. We also have included whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, and night in this. Uh, and then uh, it's based on the um, on the touch screen. So when you touch the calendar, then you'll see the calendar for this, the present month. And then you can go to the next month by an arrow <laughs> to forward. Or you can see what has happened uh, by pressing backwards. And then the, uh, the uh, dates with the, uh, where there something special happened would be marked with a red frame. Um, this is in here shown in, uh, in blue and and, and yellow. We have uh, made different <laughs> skins, so one can have it in black and white or in uh, two other color combinations. Yellow and black, I think it is now. Under the entertainment, uh, you have the different entertainment possibilities and contact. And here is not the, the uh, help button, but it, it is on the true. The point is that all those uh, mm, functions are taken from existing functions at the internet. So we're based on internet totally. And we are also based on that there is a caregiver or a healthcare professional that can, uh, that can go into this person's Google calendar and set up what is happening today. So it is based on that there is someone to uh, program it. And that's what we are really working on now to make this um, very easy to, so that any caregiver should be able to do it. Um, the final I think is just to show this is a photograph uh, from a family. Then it could then press the next button or the previous and then, uh, yeah. And you could have different photo uh, albums from childhood to wedding to whatever. Uh, and uh, uh, we also, uh, it will also be possible that um, the caregiver then can uh, reduce uh, the choices as the person, uh, for instance, only wants to look at one um, album, maybe a couple of pictures, and listen to less music and not interesting <coughs> in the headlines anymore, and uh, so that we can sort of tick out the, uh, the functions that uh, are not so interesting anymore. Um, maybe rather create confusion. Uh, I have some... Um, uh, um, I've, I've thought about uh, uh, when it comes to technology and the, for people with dementia. Now it's, it's a pleasure to see that so many um, people are engaged in this and are doing active, very interesting research in this field. 
And my first reaction when I got the idea of the forget me not calendar, uh, or, um, or my husband's reaction, this is available already. He looked up in one of his books, you know, from, from the stores that has everything. He looked and looked and looked. No, he just had to do it. He <laughs> had to do it. Uh, and um, so that was okay. It was back in the early 90s. So it was a long time ago, but dementia was, was there. <laughs> it wasn't a new thing. Uh, that was uh, something I've um, mm, thought about. And another thing I've thought about, uh, I've um, presented this karaoke um, PC screen at some conferences during the Enable project, or in, in, the, in this connection at least. And <clears throat> I've had some, some very positive reactions to this, but I've also had some quite negative reaction. People some being upset that you shouldn't sort of, uh, that people should uh, have this machine and not having live music. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mentioned this to a person with uh, working at uh, um, a senior center where we de just demonstrated the prototype of this um, PC that we are currently developing, or not the program we are developing. And she said, I don't have live music in my sitting room. <laughs> <laughs> Who has? <laughs> and um, and uh, um, again to this uh, citation, which I think was Mary Marshall, that people with dementia should have the same advantages of new technologies as all the rest of us. And I think that is some, something to speculate on. And, and also a final sort of reflection is that it seems that what uh, family caregivers experience and what professionals experience and what the authority, the government and authority, uh, what are their, there seem to be three different agendas. Um, uh, so, well, any comments on that? <laughs> was brought to you by Trinity College Dublin. For further information, please visit our website itunes.tcd.ie.